after the snowing last night, I guess it's time to get my ducks in a row and get shoveling. Konnichiwa minasan. Shoveling snow may look like a chore, but I've been waiting a long time for this. Last year, the country was closed. I missed ski season when there was over 11 meters or 36 feet of snow, which while it brought powder bliss to those visiting the region, it threatened many of the traditional folk homes throughout the valley. This year, I talked a friend into traveling 5,600 kilometers to shovel snow, make sure my roof didn't collapse, and have some fun in snow country. This being the second video about how I purchased my IKEA, I'll talk about some of the specifics, the costs, legal fees, taxes, and some of the benefits which can come along with the purchase. Let's talk about price and how much a house in the Japanese countryside costs. I have seen houses listed for tens of millions of yen and then all the way down to being given away for free. The upper end options are closer to a traditional house purchase where the house often comes with all the modern amenities, appliances, and creature comforts you could wish for, clean and ready to move in. As the cost decreases and you get closer to a free house in Japan, it also often comes with tons of work and possible investment. I'm talking about houses which will need fifty to $100,000, if not more, to make it habitable, needing work on everything from the foundation up to the roof. I have friends who received a kominka for free where they only needed to pay the legal fees to transfer the title. The reason why they were able to get it for free was because its roof had collapsed due to an extreme snowstorm. It will be a massive undertaking, but definitely worth it, while saving a 150-year-old house in the process. I can see through my umbrella. For my house, I paid somewhere in between those extremes, and while I feel a little uncomfortable saying the exact price I paid for it, I'll say it was closer to the value of a new Ford F-150. How is that for a comparison? A truck in North America versus a house in Japan. I choose the house. In addition to the purchase price, there were a few closing fees handled by the real estate agent, as well as fees for the judicial scrivener for registering and notarizing the deeds in my absence. It is a bit complicated to calculate, which is why I left it to my real estate agent and trust his very transparent calculations. I've read that the general rule is roughly 6-8% to of the sale value in closing fees, often split between the buyer and the seller, except for in the case of an IKEA where the house is abandoned, hence no seller, and therefore often borne entirely by you, the purchaser. Believe it or not, I shoveled this morning. In addition to closing costs, the province of Nagano also has a one-time welcome tax of roughly $600 to register the house. Local taxes on the house and property are roughly $350 a year, and water and sewage is about the same. Now let's talk about everybody's favorite part, financing. As I mentioned in a previous video, after negotiating the price, I paid 10% down as a deposit. At closing, I paid the remainder by online transfer. I used TransferWise. At the time, I believe they had a rate of 0.7% for the exchange fee over the spot rate, which was pretty darn good. Once the money was changed into Japanese yen, it meant that I could send the money within Japan as a local transaction for 300 yen per transfer up to $10,000. This saved me thousands of dollars compared to my home bank in Canada, which charged a ridiculous conversion fee over their exchange rate, which was already 2-3% to off of the live FX. Apparently these fees have changed a bit and a lot of fees have gone up on most uh, online transfer services, but if you're thinking about purchasing a house in Japan, it can pay to take the time and shop around as you could save a lot of money. I can't believe we just spent 10 minutes trying to find my ski. Powder is a different beast. But enough about spending. There are some really interesting benefits when you purchase a house in the countryside. While every province or town is different, ours offers new purchasers an incentive to use local contractors for renovations by splitting the first several hundred dollars of expenses. There is also a partial refund benefit for those who make the house their permanent residence within a year of purchase, which for us would have been a few thousand dollars, but we sadly missed out on it as we weren't able to make it in time. When purchasing a house in the countryside, there is also a social contract, a responsibility to the village to volunteer and assist with some public areas, such as cleaning up after festivals, ensuring waterways are clear, or helping other farmers. As the general population ages, this will become even more important where those who can will be responsible to help out around the village and keep it functioning. This shouldn't be seen as a liability, but as an asset. 
These activities also help to integrate one within the community. A little time and effort helping to clean up the fire festival is nowhere near as great a benefit as the enduring good of entering a community, which I'm sure it'll come back tenfold easily. I look forward to doing more within this community. This has been my experience purchasing a house in the Japanese countryside. Please feel free to drop me a line if you have any questions. In the meantime, I'm going to get back to shoveling snow. Cheers. Thank you. And there is the result of an hour and a half of shoveling. It's just coming right back down. But, yeah, it's the right thing to do. Cleared the road, cleared the driveway, flooded the road. But otherwise, this is looking good. As Sisyphus was forced to roll a boulder uphill permanently, it appears that we need to shovel snow constantly. After yesterday's and today's dump, that whole pile, which I spent hours shoveling away, is now back to where it was and then maybe more some. But I guess that's the whole point, is that you cut it off and that way it doesn't actually ruin the eaves. But this, uh, I think the next plan is I'm going to have to go up on that roof and shovel off that snow, which I'm not really looking looking forward to. Not sure exactly how I'm going to do it, but we shall see. It's going to be interesting. One of the beautiful things about this village is the amount of running water constantly running through these streams and then we have big ponds so it just helps with eating the mountains of snow. This system is great until you drop your phone in the river and then it has to spend the next day in a rice bath. <laughs>